Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Morris with well, the Mike Morris channel. Thank you for watching. In today's video, hopefully, we are going to help you become more familiar with your inch pound torque wrench. In our case, we are going to set it up and use it for a rolling resistant measurement on our outdrive engine for a boat. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, in front of us is the CDI inch pound dial torque wrench. And this is the cool box it comes in. And it comes from Southern California. CDI torque products. Cool case. It will be well protected over the years of owning it. And I'm going to open it up. Check that out. Got the operation manual. We will read over that shortly. Got a packet to alleviate any moisture gathering inside the case, which is awesome. What I'll do is reposition the camera and we'll talk more about the operational manual. In front of us now, a closer look at the operation manual. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing orange gloves, we are in the middle of a project. We will show you here shortly. We're just gonna cover a few basic items on this torque wrench and then we're gonna put it to use. However, opening up the manual here, you've got the certification, you've got conversion tables, which is neat. And I will go straight into this portion of the manual. We have the follower needle dial. We do not have the electric signal dial. That was a little more expensive and for our project we didn't really need it. And we have a 0 to 30 inch pound torque wrench which is going to work perfect for what we are using it for. And I'll show you that here shortly. However, just some basic items on the wrench itself. You've got the pusher needle which is going to be orange. I'll show you that. And you've got a memory follower needle which is blue. You've got the outer bezel which we can rotate both left and right. And before using, this is important. It is strongly suggested to cycle or operate them three times at full scale in the torque direction in which they will be used. Dial torque wrenches must always be zero before use and we'll talk about the rest here shortly. However, back to operating this to full scale three times prior to use. That is basically cold weather operation. In other words, you live in a cold climate or it's winter time where you live and your torque wrench is out in the garage where it is maybe 30 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit and it is very, very cold. Per the manufacturer, because we've called them a couple times and asked the question, and what they tell us each time is operating your torque dial wrench full scale three times. Again, it's just for cold weather operations because these needles can actually freeze in place. And in the event that you shift this dial wrench in place and use it to torque a nut or bolt, you might actually under torque it or even worse, you might actually over torque it, which is not good. Because again, these needles may be stiff or frozen in place and very cold. And think about your car in the event that you live in a very cold climate during the winter and the outside temperature is about 30 to 40 degrees. You don't just go out and start your car and go from zero to 70 miles an hour on the highway. You let the car warm up, hopefully in most cases, because that's good for your car and engine. However, in the event that you leave your torque wrench in a warm place, such as your house or home office, the manufacturer will actually tell you no need to full scale this torque wrench three times prior to use. However, Steps one, two, three, and four, just become familiar with the actual parts of your torque wrench. Number one, turn bezel in left hand, CCW, which means counterclockwise direction until blue memory follow needle contacts orange pusher needle. We'll show you that here shortly. Again, this portion over here, we aren't gonna pay any attention to because it's an electric signal dial and we don't have that. And on the back certification, these are extremely accurate. Here's your conversion table in the event that you ever have to use it. And what you'll do is to convert from pound inch to ounce inch, you'll multiply it by 16 and so forth all the way down. That's a lot of conversion options you have at your disposal with this awesome wrench. On the backhand side is the use of extensions and adapters. We'll talk about that at the end. From here, I'll grab this entire torque wrench out and I might reposition the camera. All right, DIYers, I shifted the camera to a different position and I'm going to pick it up. And this portion is the grip handle side and that is a very strong, reliable, and durable grip. And on the opposite side, this is where you put your socket. And overall length of the tool or torque wrench is about 12 inches. And I like how it's shiny on the top and basically flat black plastic on the bottom. So I just wanted to show you that. Let's get right into some fundamentals of the wrench itself. And as you can see here, the outer black portion is your bezel. And you can move this both left and right as I show here. And take a look at that orange needle. And what you want to do is turn the bezel until the orange needle, which is your pusher needle, you want to set that at zero. And from here, the outer blue needle, you can move. And this is your memory needle. And as you can see, this outer dial here is how you rotate or move that memory needle. And the right side is tightening it. And the left side is releasing torque from a nut or bolt. So let's talk about a few examples. In our case, we are working on a boat engine and we are going to have to set a preload on a rolling resistance 
resistance for a bearing and gear assembly. And because we are replacing all parts with new parts, we are going to have a different preload setting than if we were using the old parts and just taking them off and replacing O-rings and putting the old ones back on. In our case, we have to set our preload or rolling resistance inch pound to between six and eight, which will be right in this area right here. So what we can do is always zero out your orange pusher needle. Again, that's always step number one. From here, you have the option to set what you want your inch pound torque to be. And if I set it to that position, I can actually hook a socket. I've got a small little socket and ratchet. I'm going to hook this on the bottom side here. And I'm going to simulate as if I was torquing down that rolling resistant nut. And you can see it go all the way up and basically right to the blue memory. And then I will release it, the pusher orange needle, always reverts back to zero, and the memory needle will always stay at what we just torqued it at. Now the second example would be if I shift this memory needle to zero. Now the orange pusher needle and the blue memory needle are flush to each other, and I'm going to set, for example, inch pound torque to 10. And as I torque this, you will notice that the blue memory needle will go with the orange. Now DIYers, it is extremely important to know that this memory needle does not act as a guard or protection torque. In other words, in the event that you set it to 10, where it is right now, and I torque the bolt or nut that I'm torquing down all the way to 10, and I accidentally go over, look, you will notice that I can actually over torque the memory needle. So just keep that in mind. Again, this memory needle or blue needle is not a protection. It is not a guard. It will not stop the torque that you are applying to the nut and bolt using this wrench. In addition, you can actually use this to loosen. And I'm going to take my ratchet, shift it to the opposite side. And say, for example, we want to take the inch pound torque from what we previously set it at 10, for example, and we want to take it back down to five. What you can do is install the socket that's on the wrench and you can back off the torque and loosen the inch pound torque on the nut or bolt you are using this on, as you can see here. And these are extremely accurate. From here, I can let go, should go back to zero. Another way to do that is, again, we've got it set at 10 and we wanna take it to five. I will set my memory down to zero or negative five and apply the wrench on the nut or bolt. And again, carefully, Apply the torque pressure with the wrench until the orange pusher needle meets flush with the blue follower needle or memory needle. And then release the tension or torque on the wrench and nut. And that's how you loosen or release the torque on a nut or bolt that you just torqued down. And in our case, if we over tighten our preload on our gears and bearings, we don't have the option to just loosen it up. We will actually have to disassemble the entire assembly from the shaft, which include both bearing sets, several washers, spacers, bearings, races, and a gear. So again, we don't have that option. Real quick DIYers, I changed camera angles, and I do want to talk about the white markings that go all the way around the entire inner dial. And in our case, you'll see that zero way up top, and then you'll see a 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And that's on both right and left side. However, because this is a zero to 30 inch pound torque wrench, it is extremely accurate and precise. So as you look at this and count zero to five, you will notice there's actually 10 white markings. And what does that mean? That means in our case, this specific inch pound torque wrench has half inch pound increments or white markings. So as we add these up from zero to five to the right, you'll notice that the orange pusher needle is on zero. The very next white marking is one half followed by one. Next would be one and one half, which is the follower needle or memory needle, AKA the blue one, followed by two. And then that boldish longer white marking directly in between zero and five would be the two and a half marking. And we would continue on three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. So when we're setting up the preload, it's extremely important to do this right. And whatever bolt or nut you are torquing, in the event that you get this precise of a torque wrench, it's extremely important to know how to read those markings. The last thing I wanna show you is the backside of the owner's manual here and this is the use of extension and adapters this is extremely important in the event that you ever put an extension on this because you need to here's a pictorial image as shown here there is a calculation tw meaning torque wrench scale reading will be equal to the ta times l which is torque exerted at end of adapter which is way out here you can see the ta times the length which is basically at your grip to the end of your torque wrench right here to the end divided by the length plus the A, which is length of adapter or extension. So just keep that in mind in the event that you are using an extension to extend it outward, not downward. 
So for example, if you get a three to four inch extension coming off this point here, feeding down to a socket going on the nut or bolt that you are torquing down, that is not the same as adding an extension feeding outward and in line with the tool itself as shown in this image right here. So read over your manual, become familiar with it. Let us know if you have any questions. This is an awesome torque wrench. And what we'll do from here is we'll take you to the workstation and show you what we will be using this on. All right, DIYers at the workstation now. And again, we are rebuilding a boat. Here's the Alpha 1 Gen 1 upper unit. Lower unit is down below on the white stand. Here's the assembly that we are going to be using that torque wrench on. Here's the gear, here is the nut, and inside there is the preload washer that we will set the preload when assembling the new gear and bearings onto the new shaft and U-joints and all the additional parts. And quite a lot to it, but a torque wrench is going to come in perfectly handy. And if you want to see us use it, definitely check out the link scrolling above. From here, do us a favor, blow the video. You'll see the thumbs up icon. Click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel. Definitely ring your YouTube bell. That would be very helpful to us. We really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching.